In this video, we'll be looking at another example of an improper integral where I have an unbounded integrand. So here I'm being asked to evaluate the integral from 0 to 1 of log of x dx. So let's just remind ourselves what our log function looks like. So I have y equals log x over here. Um, I can see on my graph that as I approach um, 0 from the right, my graph is getting smaller and smaller, more and more negative. So I do have the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of log x is equal to negative infinity. So I have an infinite discontinuity at the left endpoint of this um, interval. I'm asked here to find this, this integral from 0 to 1. So um, what that means geometrically is finding this um, area here, and that'll be a, a signed area, that should be a negative value that we get for this, this integral. Um, but we know that since my um, log function here is getting closer and closer to zero from the right, but it's going to keep going down off to negative infinity, um, there's quite um, an area there, and we're interested in whether that, that area is actually going to converge to a finite number, um, or whether it's going to diverge. So we're going to try to um, compute that integral to answer that question. So here I know that zero is my problem value. So I'm going to rewrite this as a limit as a approaches zero from the right of the integral from a to one of log x dx. Okay, so our first step always in our improper integral problems is to write as a limit. Even if you're not sure how you're going to go about doing the integration, first step you always want to do is to rewrite that improper integral as a limit. Then we can deal with any kind of integration technique that we might have to use. Um, and one reason that we're doing this particular problem is because it does involve um, an integration technique that we've seen before. It's not going to be just a rule. Um, so here I'm integrating um, log of x, and so if we think back to some integration techniques that we've done before, um, integrating this function is going to require using integration by parts. So we're going to need integration by parts here. So what are the, the parts for u and dv that we're going to need? Well, u we would let be log of x, dv dx, du will be 1 over x dx, and v will be x. Okay, so we have our limit as a approaches 0 from the right. Now of my definite integral from a to 1 of log of x dx being um, equal to this limit now of x times log x, my uv, evaluated from a to 1, minus the integral of my v du, evaluated from a to 1. Okay, so that's going to simplify a little bit. So let's see what we have. We have our limit as a goes to 0 from the right. Um, plugging in my bounds here, this will be 1 log of 1. We know that log of 1 is 0, so I'm going to have 0 minus a log a. Then I'm going to have minus, this is going to be just an integral of 1, so that would be x, um, evaluated here from a to 1. Okay, So we'll take this down and simplify this. Notice notation-wise um, that we're bringing along our um, limit notation in every line, and we're also um, keeping our um, let's see, our equal sign. So just notice that I've got all this equals and I've got all this limit notation on each stage and that's important um, for, for our work for the next line to be equal to the previous line. We haven't taken the limit yet um, so we're going to be showing how um, this initial question here is equal through a series of steps to our final answer. So that's why we need that, those equals and we need that limit, limit notation to be carried along because we haven't yet actually evaluated the limit. So we're just emphasizing that that's important there. So I've got my limit here of negative a log a minus, this would be 1 minus a. Okay, so notice that taking the limit as a goes to 0 of 1 minus a is going to be straightforward. But the limit as a goes to 0 of a log a, we're going to have to think a little bit more about. So I'm going to write this as the limit as a goes to 0 from the right of negative a log a minus the limit as a goes to 0 from the right of 1 minus a. Okay, so notice that this limit here, well, I can just substitute in uh, 0 for a. So that's just going to be 1. But I am going to have to do some work to figure out what that first um, limit is going to be equal to. So let's look at this um, in a little bit more detail here. So notice that as a goes to 0 from the right, a would just be going to 0. What about log of a? Well, recall from 
what we wrote before here, that the limit as um, something inside of that log function would be going to zero from the right would make that log function be going off to negative infinity. So I know that this log a part is going to negative infinity, a is going to zero. So this is a zero times infinity, what we call indeterminate form, which is something that was introduced back in Calc 1. Um, and it is a description and not a number. So this having it be called an indeterminate form means just knowing something is zero times infinity. Um, we can't determine what the um, numerical value is going to be until we do some more work, some more algebra with that limit. So looking at this, I'm going to rewrite this um, so that I will have an infinity over infinity. Um, I think I'm going to rewrite it yeah, with an infinity over infinity type form so that I can apply L'Hopital's rule. So that's frequently the, the trick when you have something that's a zero times infinity. We try to rewrite it um, as a quotient so it'll be a zero over zero or an infinity over infinity form. And then we can apply L'Hopital's rule um, to help us compute that limit. So now I've got this limit as a goes to zero from the right. I'm going to rewrite this as log a divided by negative 1 over a, so rewriting the product as this quotient here, and now um, my log a is going to negative infinity as a goes to 0 from the right, negative 1 over a is also going to negative infinity, so this is now an infinity over infinity indeterminate form. So we can use L'Hopital's rule in order to compute this limit. So I'm going to have my limit here as a goes to 0 from the right, my derivative of log a would be 1 over a. The derivative of negative 1 over a, um, this is going to be, let's see, if I have negative 1 over a to the negative 1, that'll be 1 over a squared. So this will be equal to the limit as a goes to 0 from the right of 1 over a times a squared. See, we're going to be taking just a limit of a, which will be equal to 0. So we can say that our integral from 0 to 1 of log x dx is equal to 0 minus 1 or equal to negative 1. So the value of our integral is negative 1. One thing that I want to point out for this example um, is that it shows how L'Hopital's rule is going to um, frequently show up when we needed to use integration by parts on an improper integral. Um, if we're using integration by parts, that means there's a, a product that's going on. If we're doing improper integrals, that means we're, we're probably dealing with things that are going to um, infinity in a lot of cases. Um, so we can expect when we're doing an improper integral um, with integration by parts that we may end up with a limit of um, an indeterminate form and need to make use of L'Hopital's rule in some way. Um, so you want to uh, look out for that situation um, and know how you're going to deal with it in the future.